So I'm Brad Levitt with AFT Construction, and just recently I was invited to High Point Market to speak on a panel with Luan, Luan Nigero. And a common theme in some of the panels that I attended as well as being on, a common question as you look at interior design firms, you know, a lot of them are small firms. It may just be a one or two person firm at the time and they're looking to grow, you know, into a bigger company. And one of the questions often asked was, how do you build systems? How do you build that operation and process so that you can maybe step out of the day to day, hire someone and move to the next level? And again, it's not something you can really answer over a panel. This is much more of a long form um, process. But the reality is, how do you get to that point as a company that you have systems and processes? And again, there's there's a whole timeline here. And what the, the advice I'd always give, give to others that I looked at for me when I started my company is when I was in the very beginning, right? And you're wearing a lot of hats from accounting and business and marketing, right? You're in the field. I was, you know, superintendent on some of our remodels running projects. Understanding what does it take from point A to point Z, right? So from that initial call, when I get that first call of someone that wants to do a project with AFT until move in, to you turn the keys over and that warranty period starts, what does that process look like? And so you have to understand what does it take to build a home, right? What is, as that baton's passed through the organization. So having a roadmap of what that process looks like now allows you to separate that into different departments, right? Estimating and pre-construction, right? Uh, you know, the, the going vertical out in the field, you know, the contracts that have to happen behind the scenes, the purchasing, uh, you know, we've had everything bid and estimated, but we have to contract and purchase this stuff now. You know, coordination and scheduling. And then what does that closing look like? As a client moves in her home, how do you close the project? You know, what is punch, what is, um, the punch item process look like? What does the warranty item look process look like? If you don't have a defined way of how you close a home, where a lot of builders get into trouble is, you know, clients move in and what's punch and what's warranty? How do you differentiate the two? And how do you create a fine line where, yes, this is our punch that we're working off of, and then once this is done, warranty will kick in. And so having this clear information and really one thing that's really helped, again, understanding how that baton's passed, right? That's an element to it. And we talk about the job, you know, the job audit, right? The doing the, the inventory at the end of the project, the autopsy, if you will. And we just had one recently. We just finished a project and, you know, this was our Citrus Point project working for some amazing clients, incredible clients. You know, they take possession of the home and we sat there in our production meeting and now, you know, we've grown to a company of 29 people. And as we're sitting there, we have a whole list of questions that we go through, you know, from how did budget look? What were pain points from the customer? What was some of the feedback they had, right? What subcontractors and trade partners, suppliers performed? Which ones didn't perform? Are we seeing this as a repetition throughout other projects? You know, for any trade partners that are overlapping, which ones are excelling for us and really helped us make this project a success? And are we giving them the kudos that they deserve? And so understanding this roadmap of what it looks like when a project's done, now we can take these items that we've learned from previous history and we can implement them. And a lot of times the failures and breakdowns with client communication is because we didn't set proper expectations. A lot of these relationships go south because we didn't you know, communicate budget properly. We didn't communicate timeline properly. Maybe there's a quality issue at the end. Maybe we didn't deliver. You know, Maybe there was something that wasn't explained very well or something that was cross-checked before it was sent on an invoice. There's a lot of elements and yes, absolutely. Sometimes we have customers that may be unreasonable or we may feel unreasonable. But at the core, where did we drop the ball? And can we have that honesty internally to see where we made a mistake and then what changes can we make to circumvent that in the future and work around that? So as you start thinking about processes, not only understand that roadmap, but also the job autopsies, you know, years in business, and then looking at software, all the different softwares that we use and vendors that we're working with to see how can we better this? Case in point is that lately, we've been really working on because we're a cost plus contractor, how that's communicated and presented to the client throughout construction and throughout the build. Now, you know, I was able to attend the, the tech summit out in California and, you know, there's a vendor that has software that's going to integrate with Build-A-Trend to give us a much clearer communication channel for the cost of the project to the client. So again, as you look at processes, now that we've identified what our financials look like and how we communicate that to a client on an open book cost plus system, well, is there another element? Because yes, we've gotten feedback that there's been some pain points from our customer on this. Now we have an option because we've identified the process and what it takes to create an owner bill and do our AP and AR, and now we can find something that'll supplement that moving forward. So again, as we look at that, you know, we can use in software and systems, but again, you have to have a basis and have that documented so that if I'm gone, anyone can step in my place and say, I know what role that I need to fulfill. So having good job descriptions of what that title entails, you know, having a good idea of the process and the building schedule. Again, these are all, all elements to build a healthy company, good processes, you know, that you can function 
uh, if employees are gone or, or away for a long leave or whatever price, crisis may come on board.